When do we use integration of our parts? Well, if substitution doesn't work, uh, the next method uh, to try is integration by parts. So many integrals, as I said, uh, such as x e to the power of x, x sine x, or x the, into the root of 1 plus 3x, etc., cannot be integrated using substitution. And to integrate such functions, you need to apply the method of by parts or integration by parts, okay? So here's the formula. So the integration by parts formula is the integral of u dv over dx with respect to x, and that is equal to uv minus the integration of v du over dx with respect to x, okay? Now, the left-hand integral, the integration of u dv over dx with respect to x, that is the question, okay? So our job is we need to choose u and dv over dx, okay? And the idea is when choosing u and dv over dx, we need to choose them in a way such that the integral on the right hand side, uh, v du over dx, that should be easy to integrate. Now generally, um, when I apply by parts, so generally speaking, okay, I always take u to be the x term and dv over dx to be the remaining term when applying by parts, okay? So uh, let me explain uh, with some examples. So back to the paper and pen. Let me take this example, so let me call this example number one. Take a quick red pen and ruler. So the integration of x into the root of uh, one plus three x with respect to x, okay? Now over here, let me show you how parts works. So. As I said earlier, I usually take u to be the x term and dv over dx to be the remaining term generally, okay? And I do this unless I have the special case, okay? So I'll go through the special cases later. So unless it's a special case or unless we're going through special cases, generally take u to be the x term and dv over dx to be the remaining term. So I have an x term over here. So in this case, we're going to apply by parts, okay? And remember the formula is the integration u dv over dx, and that is uv minus the integration v du by dx with respect to x, okay? So I'm going to take u to be the x term, okay? And dv over dx, that is the remaining term. So the remaining term in our integral is what, the root of one plus three x. Now, in order to use the by parts formula here, we need to calculate du over dx, and we also need to work out what v is, okay? So du over dx, when I differentiate x, that is one v in this case when we integrate the root of 1 plus 3x let's see what we have okay now let's rewrite this integral so the root of 1 plus 3x that is the same as 1 plus 3x to the power of half okay and remember in one of the videos i showed you a quick way to integrate, so let me take a red pen to remind you. So to integrate ax plus b to the power of n, okay? So if you wanna integrate any expression of the form ax plus b to the power of n, where a, b, and n are constants, remember the idea, we add one to the power. So when I add one to the power, it's n plus one, okay? divided by that result, so divided by n plus 1, then you divide by the derivative of ax plus b, so when you differentiate ax plus b, it's a, okay? And in this case, we're going to use this result here because our integral is of the form 
AX plus B to the power of N. So let's apply that approach. So we're going to have 1 plus 3X. And when I add 1 to the power, half plus 1 is 3 over 2 divided by the 3 over 2. But you also need to divide by the derivative of 1 plus 3x, which is 3. Okay? And what I would say is don't add the c over here. So don't add the constant of integration over here at this stage when calculating v. We're going to be adding the integration constant at the final stage. Okay? So don't add the constant of integration c when working out v. So when we simplify this, we're going to have 2 over 3 times 3, which is 9. So 2 over 9 into 1 plus 3x to the power 3 over 2. So that is our v. Okay. So that is our side calculation. And let's replace these results into the formula. So into the biparts formula. So in this case, integration of u which is x, dv over dx which is the root of 1 plus 3x with respect to x and that is equal to uv so ru is x, v is in this case 2 over 9 so 2 over 9 into 1 plus 3x to the power 3 over 2 okay minus uh, the integration of, so minus the integration of v, v again is 2 over 9 into 1 plus 3x to the power 3 over 2 times du over dx and du over dx being 1. Okay? So, what I would say is, instead of integrating that right-hand term straight away, what I would do is just expand the brackets. Get rid of the brackets first and then integrate later. Okay? So when I expand the brackets, we're going to have 2x over 9 into 1 plus 3x to the 3 over 2 minus the integration of... Uh, 2 over 9 times 1 plus 3x uh, to the power 3 over 2 times 1 is 2 over 9 into 1 plus 3x to the power 3 over 2. Okay? And in order to integrate this term over here, remember our function is of the form ax plus b to the power of n again, so we can apply this approach again to integrate this term. Okay? So let's do that on the reverse. So let's continue on the reverse. So in this case, our question, the left hand side, which is x into the root 1 plus 3x with respect to x, that is equal to, so let's remind ourselves, 2x over 9 into 1 plus 3x to the power 3 over 2. So let's copy that here. So 2x over 9 into 1 plus 3x to the power 3 over 2 minus and 2 over 9 is a constant so 2 over 9 let's keep that there that's our constant and if we apply this result over here for the integral of ax plus b to the power of n so let's apply that result here since this function is of the form ax plus b to the n as well so we're going to have, as a result, 1 plus 3x. So remember, add 1 to the power. So 3 over 2 plus 1 is 5 over 2. Okay. Uh, divided by the 5 over 2. Then you also divide by the derivative of ax plus b. So when I differentiate 1 plus 3x, it's 3. Okay. And now you add C. So remember what I said earlier, you add C at the final stage. So don't add C when working out V 
add C at the final stage of the process, okay? So let's tidy this up. So we're gonna have 2x over 9, okay? And 1 plus 3x to the power 3 over 2, I'm gonna write that in terms of a root. So it's, it's the same as the root of 1 plus 3x cubed, okay? Minus, and 2 over 9 divided by, so over here we have 5 over 2 times 3. In this case we're going to have 4 divided by uh, 9 times 5 times 3, that is 1, 3, 5, okay? And 1 plus 3x to the 5 over 2, let me write that as the root of 1 plus 3x to the power 5 add c. So that is your final, final solution to this problem. Here's the tip when using integration by parts. So generally, unless you have a special case, okay, take u to be the x term and dv over dx to be the remaining term when applying by parts. So in this case, I have an x term over here, so I took u to be x and dv over dx <coughs> to be the remaining term, which is the root of 1 plus 3x. And by doing that, remember, vd over dx will become easy to integrate. Let's try part b. So in part b, let's integrate. So let's integrate 2x into sine 6x. Okay. So once again, I can't apply substitution over here. So there's no way that I can integrate that using substitution. So I rely on now by parts. So I have an x term over here. The x term is 2x. Two, two so I'm going to take u to be 2x and dv over dx to be the remaining term, which is sine 6x. Okay. So let me write down the by parts formula. So remember the by parts formula, it's the integration of u dv over dx with respect to x, that is uv minus the integration of v du over dx with respect to x. So if it's not a special case, so I'll go through the special cases soon, but if it's not a special case, u is the x term, so I take u to be 2x and dv over dx is the remaining term which is sine 6x okay so we need du over dx and v so firstly du over dx want to differentiate 2x that is 2 v is the integration of sine 6x so let's integrate sine 6x so when we integrate sine, it's minus cos. So it's minus cos 6x divided by 6. Okay? So if you're unfamiliar in terms of integrating trigonometric functions, be sure to check out my uh, video that I did on the integration of trigonometric functions. I'll provide a link to that video in, this, in the description below. Okay? Let's get back to the problem. So also remember, do not add C when working out V. We'll be adding C at the final stage, okay? So let's take these results and put them into our formula for by parts. So now it's the integration of U is 2X, DV over DX, that is sine 6X. So that is our question. Okay, so the left hand side is our question. That is equal to uv, u is 2x, v is minus cos 6x over 6, okay? Uh, minus the integral, so minus the integral of v, which is minus cos 6x divided by 6 times du over dx being 2. 
okay? So as I said when we uh, did the previous example, so as I said, do not integrate this right hand term straight away. First multiply the brackets and then integrate later. So when I multiply the brackets, the two can cancel with this six, okay? Giving us minus x cos six x divided by three. And when we multiply out, minus into this minus is plus. So these two minuses give a plus, okay? Two will cancel with the six three times. So we're integrating, okay? My, uh, one over three, so one over three is remaining, cos six x, okay? So that is what I would highly recommend. Multiply your brackets first and then integrate later, okay? And when we integrate, let's see what we have. So we've got minus x, cos 6x divided by 3 and let's integrate this trigonometric function so we have 1 over 3 that is a constant we'll leave that as it is and when we integrate cos it's plus sign so it's sine 6x divided by 6 okay and add c so do not, do not add C when working out V, add C at the final stage, okay? So let's tidy this up. So a fresh piece of paper is in order. So in this case, this is what we're gonna have. So let me keep what we had earlier here, okay? So that we can have a look. So in this case, that is equal to the minus X cos 6x divided by 3, okay, uh, plus the 1 divided by 3 times 6 is 18, sine 6x plus c. So that is your final, final answer to this problem, part b, okay. So in this case, once again, um, you can't integrate this integral using substitution. So in the next step, think about by parts. So take u to be the x term and dv over dx to be the remaining term when you're applying by parts. Okay, so that generally works. Now, let me talk to you about the special cases. Here are the special cases. So back to the screenshot. So remember the special case, when integrating a product containing either a natural logarithm, so or ln, or an inverse trigonometric function, so whether it is sine inverse, cos inverse, or tan inverse, say, okay, always choose u to be the natural logarithm or the inverse trigonometric function when applying by parts, okay? So dv over dx is the remaining function in the by parts formula. So back to the paper in pen. Let's take this example. I'll call this example number two. And let's integrate x ln x with respect to x, okay? So in this case, you can't apply substitution. So substitution doesn't work. But remember, whenever you have an ln or inverse trigonometric function uh, to integrate, so if your term contains an ln or inverse trigonometric function, think about by parts straight away. And think about what I said earlier regarding the special case. So my function has ln, so whenever I use by parts, I take u to be the ln term, okay? So, by parts, let's write down the formula. So the formula, remember, is the integral of u dv over dx with respect to x. That is uv minus the integral of v du by dx with respect to x. Okay? u, I'm not even going to think about it because remember, u is ln. Okay? And dv over dx is the remaining term, and the remaining term is x, okay? So we need du over dx and v. So du over dx 
want to differentiate ln x, it's 1 over x. V is the integral of x, and that being x squared over 2. Okay? So let's substitute this data into the biparts formula. So on the left hand side, the question u is ln x and dv over dx is x so it's the integral of x ln x so the left hand side should match your question that's equal to uv so u is ln x v is x squared over 2 minus the integral of v v is x squared over 2 du over dx, that being 1 over x. Okay? So remember, as I said twice before, don't integrate straight away. Simplify, so expand the brackets and simplify, then integrate. So when I expand my brackets, I'm going to have x squared ln x over 2 minus and this x cancels with one of them in the numerator so I'm integrating x over 2 with respect to x and in this case we're going to have x squared ln x divided by 2 minus and when we integrate x over 2 with respect to x it's x squared over 4 add c so that is the final solution uh, to this very problem. Okay, so we'll call this example 2, part A. So remember, if your integral contains ln or an inverse trigonometric function, it's by parts. And remember, it's a special case, take u to be the ln or the inverse trigonometric term, dv over dx will be the remaining term in your integral. Okay? Let's take another example. So on the reverse, let's try a part B. So let's integrate uh, tan inverse x with respect to x. You don't have to think about this. Remember, well, if your integral contains ln or an inverse trigonometric function, it's going to be by parts, okay? And it's a special case, take u to be the inverse trig term in this case. So let's apply by parts. So let's write down the formula integral u dv over dx, that is uv minus the integral of v du by dx with respect to x. So u is tan inverse x and dv over dx, so the remaining term is going to be 1. Okay, so remember tan inverse x is the same as writing 1 times tan inverse x. So if you take u to be tan inverse x, the remaining term dv over dx is 1. Okay. So let's work out du over dx. So du over dx, when I differentiate tan inverse, it's 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay? And v is the integration of 1. And when you integrate 1, that's simply x. Okay? So let's apply these results and let's put them into the formula. So on the left hand side, our question, so u is tan inverse x, dv over dx is 1, so integration of tan inverse x with respect to x, so that should match our question. That is equal to u, u is tan inverse x, times v, v is x, minus the integration of v, which is x, times du over dx, that being 1 over 1 plus x squared. 
okay? So remember what I said uh, earlier, many a time, don't integrate straight away, okay? Multiply brackets first. So when I multiply, I'm gonna have x, tan inverse x, minus the integral of, and when I multiply the brackets here, we're gonna have x divided by one plus x squared to integrate, okay? So at this stage, let's think about this integral. So let me call that star, and let's integrate star as a side calculation. So let's think about the integral of x divided by one plus x squared with respect to x. So remember in this case, it's a fraction. So whenever I have a fraction, I think about firstly f primed over f, the result for f primed over f, okay? So whenever it's a fraction, think about f primed over f first. And if you have a product of two terms in your denominator, and if it's a fraction still, then think about partial fractions uh, later, okay? So it's a fraction over here. So I'm gonna think about f primed over f first. So remember the method, f of x is the denominator term. It's one plus x squared. So when I differentiate, f primed will be 2x, okay? So let's rewrite this integral. So keep the one plus x squared in the denominator as it is, okay? And remember, whatever you have for f primed, write that in the numerator. So copy that in your numerator here. So here's your two of x. And as you can see, this integral and this integral do not match. So go the extra step. So outside your integral, okay? Remember the number, so the number two right here, so green with green, so the only the number right outside. So this two, copy that here, okay? And in order to get the one, so to get the one x, the number matches the number here. So these two numbers should match. So I have a number here, right over here. So one, right here, one. Okay, so dotted black, dotted black, green number, green number, okay? So as you could, as you could see, when you double check this integral, half times two x is one x. So these two integrals now match. So remember the result for f primed over f. Whenever you integrate a function of the form f primed x over f of x with respect to x, the answer is ln the modulus of f of x add c. So now we're gonna have half. This term inside our integral is of the form f primed over f of x. So the result would be ln the modulus of f of x being one plus x squared plus c. Okay, so remember what I said, if it is a fraction, try f primed over f of x, and if you have two terms, uh, two or more terms multiplied in your denominator, then think about partial fractions, okay? So we're gonna have x tan inverse x, minus, and the integral of star we worked out here. So it's half ln the modulus of one plus x squared add c. So that is the final solution to our problem for part b, the integration of tan inverse x with respect to x, okay? So remember, whenever you encounter a special case, a special case is whenever you integrate an inverse trig function or a natural logarithmic function, think about by parts and think about this idea. Always take u to be the ln term or the inverse trigonometric term when applying by parts, okay? So that ends these examples and that sadly also ends the video.
So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, a like will be very much appreciated. Uh, do plenty of practice related questions and I hope to see you again. Thank you.